Many people's fear about coaching is that it's something, it's just sort of fluffy and woolly and cuddly and it's just, um, it's a bit new age and it's a bit, I might have to say people think it's American. Um, and they fear that they relinquish control. Um, yet coaching comes from two areas, um, performance coaching in business and industry, athlete centred coaching in sport, where results are more paramount than they are even here. You know, if you don't make more money in business, you don't carry on doing what you're doing. Or if you do, you, you, you fail and you go bankrupt or whatever. If you don't win more matches or have more success on the sports field, you don't carry on coaching the way you are, otherwise you get sacked. So the fact that all the major sporting organisations around the world have either upended and transformed their coaching structures to become athlete-centred or they're in the process of doing so. The fact that many, most I would say, really successful organisations um, in business and industry are using coaching in some way, uh, that ought to tell people enough about, about the results, um, the, the potential for improvement of results that exists with coaching. Um, the other side of it, within the coaching conversation, one of the key steps is the accountability. So when you get to the end of a conversation, there is, you actually pin people down. You know, what are you gonna do? When are you gonna do it? How will I know? And, and you know, rather than me tell somebody, well, I need you to go away and do X, and, and if you haven't done it by Y, then you'll be in trouble. <laughs> That's, there's no ownership there. Um, and you're able to, you know, to give people ownership, or then they take ownership by that accountability process.